Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, it's part two of the new excavator build. Well, we had one heck of a part one, a very information packed and very labor intensive uh, job for the first episode of the show. Very challenging, but not impossible. And I honestly hope that you guys gave that a try. But now it's time to move on. And well, you know what? There's a lot to do. So let's just carry on with the build. I think the way I'd like to start off today is by making these bottom roller wheels. We need 16 of them, um, 5 16th of an inch thick. So what I have is some 5 16th of an inch thick maple. I've laid out cross hairs at each one and drawn our 3 quarter inch diameter circle using a circle template at each location. So the first thing I want to do, it shows here that we need a 5 32nd through hole. So at each one of these now, I actually have two extras in case you're counting, but at each one of them, we're going to drill a 5 32nd diameter through hole. And at this point, I'm gonna take them all over to the scroll saw and I am going to cut them all out outside of the line. If you don't have a scroll saw, I showed you in episode one how you could use a coping saw it's the same process, uh, no matter how you look at it. You can even remove your arbor bit and using the fence on your drill press, use a hole saw to cut these out if you want. Either way, I'm gonna get them cut and then I'm gonna show you what to do with them next. And before too long, you'll have these. So you can't use them like this. They're very rough. They're outside of their dimension. So what can you do? Well, my preferred method, as a lot of you already know, is to turn these down on the lathe. But it's pretty difficult to get an arbor that is 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. So what you can do is if you have a 10 24 thread bolt, the diameter of this bolt is 5 30 seconds so you can use this as your arbor and spin these wheels on here it is a tight fit because it's exactly the right size so spin these on here and then you can use this in a drill chuck on your lathe or in your drill press and by using sandpaper if you don't have a lathe you can use sandpaper, mount it to a block of wood, and shape all of these wheels down to their three-quarter. Once you get them done down to the three-quarter, then you can add this little five-degree bevel on each side of the wheel that they ask for. So it's not a difficult process. Even if you don't have a lathe, it's very doable if you have a drill press and a 1024 bolt. Before long, you will have all of your wheels. Um, and then you can just give them a little sanding on the surfaces here, just a light one. You don't want to take away any of their thickness. And once you get that done, these wheels are finished. Um, now, I want to point out something to you. Measurements on a print are usually black and white. If it says it's quarter inch, it's quarter inch. But in the case of these wheels where they are saying to bevel the edge of these wheels at five degrees, guys, don't drive yourself crazy. That five degree bevel, it has a purpose, but if you're six degrees or eight degrees, it's okay in this case. It's just meant as a guide for the wheel. So don't drive yourself crazy with those bevels. Get them close and you'll be just fine. Well, all of our wheels will eventually get held in place all the way along our walnut pieces here using uh, an inch and a quarter long one eighth diameter dowel. We can see it right here, the bottom roller wheel pin. So we need to make 16 of these pins and there's no easier way really and no safer way than with a small little miter box with a stop block. You can set it up and just sit down at your bench and cut all 16. I would cut a couple extra just in case, um, but either way, 
a little miter box is a great way to get this done. While we're at it and we have the miter box out and a stop block with it, we might as well cut the 56 track pins that we need. And we'll cut those from a 332nd diameter dowel and they will be two inches long a piece. Well, I think the next piece that I'd like to make will be these four top roller wheel brackets. And they are made, I'm going to make mine out of walnut, I think. I'm going to check the rack and see what I've got in stock. Um, you can see here we have the width of our piece, we have the length of our piece, but there is no height. Um, I don't see it anywhere here on the print. So that's no big deal. We can just measure it off. And it looks to be, it's actually 1730 seconds. So what you want to do for this piece is you don't want to cut them this small. We're going to cut it out of a larger piece. We're going to cut these two rabbits here first. And when we get them done, we can mark and drill our 532nd diameter holes. And then using a miter box, we will cut these to their individual sizes to get our pieces all finished. One thing that I forgot to mention about these brackets is that I drilled the hole first. I laid these all out on the stock before I ever cut the dados. I drilled those holes. I had my angled lines marked. Then I cut those dados and then cut them at the miter box. Uh, sorry about that. That's one little thing I neglected to mention. But with those four now cut, um, I think I'd like to cut the wheels that go with it, and that would be these ones. Now, with our other ones over here with a 532nd uh, hole in the middle, we found that a 1024 bolt would equal that diameter. However, for 1 8th, I found the closest thing that I had was a 632 bolt, and that's what I'm going to use. It is 1 128th of an inch bigger than 1 8 but that's okay it'll still work it'll thread into that hole so i'm going to i don't think we need another video of it i'm going to do it in the same fashion as these ones i'm going to mark them out cut them on the scroll saw and then spin them at the lathe if you don't have a lathe mount them on your bolt and use the sandpaper and drill method um, that i explained earlier so I'm gonna get these eight wheels cut, and while we've got the miter box out, I may as well cut these um, one inch roller wheel pins. I don't understand why they say to make five. I've looked through this plan here. I've only found four, um, but I'll cut five and see what happens. Um, maybe I'll end up with an extra one at the end. Either way, let's get those parts made and um, like I said, we don't need a video of that. And with those pieces cut and turned, we will place them all in our little bin with all of our small pieces here. And that is pretty much all of the pieces on page two, with the exception of the track sections. We're gonna get into that just a little later because I want to finish all the pieces that we need for this track. So we're gonna turn our attention to page three or sheet three of the plans. And I want to make these two front roller wheels. So I've made a photocopy or two photocopies of these wheels. And there's all kinds of ways that you could do this. If you have a fret saw, you could use that. Um, if you have a scroll saw, you can cut around the perimeter and then come in and do each little notch. If you have that kind of control, that's great. Um, for me, I, I think I'm gonna, I want these to be right on the money. So what I'm going to do is, it shows you here 12 times radius of 1 8th. A 1 8th radius, the radius is from the center to the outer edge of the circle. So that would be a 1 quarter inch diameter bit because it would be double the radius. So what we can do is we can take this pattern, we can place it onto um, a blank that is 5 sixteenths of an inch thick. We can see that here. We're going to drill our center hole and we're also going to drill all of our quarter inch holes all the way around. When we get that done, 
we're going to take it over to the scroll saw. I'm going to cut just outside of the line and then I'm going to put it on the lathe to spin it and sand it until I get down to its final dimension. Um, it sounds like a complicated process, but really it isn't if you just think it through. Well, with those pieces cut, we can now turn our attention to the track segments. And for these track pieces, what we are going to do is we're actually going to cut them in pieces and then assemble them. So these ribs that you see here, they will be cut and glued on afterwards, as will these ones right here. So really the only thing we need is this center thickness, which is 3 16 of an inch thick. Now, if you look at the way, this is the top profile. If you look at the way that this is cut, you want to be mindful of which way you put the grain. If you put the grain going this way, that leaves these pieces here with small little grain lines that will make these very, very fragile. It will not work. Your track will break. So you need to make the grain this way so that it will help to strengthen these pieces all the way along. And then when we glue these track um, rails in place, that will pull everything together and strengthen it. So the first thing that we're going to need, as I said, we're going to need some 3 16 inch thick. In this case, I'm going to use walnut. So I've milled a bunch of 3 16 stock and the first thing you want to do is you want to rip it on its length so that we get the grain going this way. You want to rip pieces that are as wide as what these tracks are. So what I've done is I added these numbers up across the board and this is 1 8th. If we assume that this is symmetrical, that would make this one 1 8th as well. So let's just add these up here. We've got 1 8th of an inch plus, there's a 7 32nd for this gap, 7 30 32nd plus 1 inch and 9 30 seconds plus another 7 30 seconds plus our symmetrical 1 8th of an inch and you get 1 and 31 30 seconds. I double checked it, I triple checked it. Those measurements, you add them up, that's what you get. So here I go and I rip a length 1 and 31 30 seconds wide. So you bring your piece over. I'd like to cut one piece and then test it against this because we're cutting so many of them you want to be sure. So if I line up the edge here on the pattern, can you see this side? Look at the overhang. And that's when I started to think something is not right. So then I decided to add these measurements up, up here. Again, assuming this is symmetrical, this 11 sixteenths would be identical over here. And this 5 30 seconds right here would be identical for this one. So let's just add these up and see what we get. We've got 11 sixteenths plus 5 30 seconds plus our 11 30 seconds in the middle plus our 5 30 seconds and assuming symmetrical plus 11 16 and what we get is 2 and 1 30 seconds of an inch so which is it is it 2 and 1 30 second or is it 1 and 31 30 seconds that's a big difference it really is. It's a sixteenth of an inch. And when you're talking about assembling tracks, that sixteenth of an inch can really bugger you up. So I cut them. I'm going to err on the side of caution at two and one thirty second. And when I line them up to my pieces here, that seems to be right. I don't see any overhang on either side. They line up perfectly. So I'm going to make the tracks using pieces that are two and one thirty second of an inch wide. You guys have the benefit through this tutorial video of finding out if it's right or not. So something to be very aware of and something to be very careful of using any plans, not just toys and joys. People make mistakes, guys. 
Um, it's nothing to be upset about. You know, it's just something that you need to check and be aware of. So the bottom line here is, is that you need a bunch of strips that are two and one thirty-second in my case, I'll let you know if that's wrong, wide and three sixteenths of an inch thick. So what do we need to do now? Well, now we need to cut them to their width. So the only width I can find on these plants for these tracks is right here in our side profile view at one and one sixteenth. But yet, if I measure it, I like to measure from the one, just so I have a positive reference point. If I measure it, it's actually, on the drawing anyway, one and one thirty-second of an inch. And if I come over to this, because this would be the width of our piece here as well, I'm just going to take another measurement here and see how we make out. I'm getting one and one thirty-second of an inch. So... I'm a little, a little confused, maybe a little, um, I'm a little puzzled as to which measurement to use. Um, so I'm going to add up some of these numbers here on the plan and see what makes more sense. One and one thirty second or one and one sixteenth. And then we'll carry on from there. Whatever measurement I come up with, I'll let you know. And we need to cut off sections of this to get each of our track segments. So I'm going to go with one and one sixteenth. So you just need to cut, cross cut a whole bunch of these 56. I'm going to give you some advice. Make extras. You are going to need extras. Some of these will break. Some of these will uh, not be aligned. Some of them will have flaws. I'm just going to use my gripper push pads and run these through uh, keeping my fingers away from the blade and I'll, I'll get all these pieces cut and then we'll move on from there. So all of these now at one and one sixteenth of an inch wide and two and one thirty second of an inch long. We are now going to head over to the drill press. So the next step in making these track sections is drilling the holes. And if we look here at the print, we can see that one side of the track gets a 332nd through hole and the opposite side of the track gets a 18th through hole. Now, for the 332nds, they will only go through the bottom nubs here on the piece. So we only really have to drill them half an inch deep. You don't need to go all the way through. The deeper you go with a thin bit like this, the more it's going to deflect. And if it deflects, your track will twist and it will be garbage. I promise you that. Personal experience talking here. So take your time to set up your drill press and your fence. Install your 332nd bit and mark a piece. You can, you know what, use a couple for scrap if you have to, just to get the setup right. And once you're happy with the fact that you have a stop set up to drill the center of your hole one eighth of an inch in from the end as well, you have it so that it is centered on that three uh, sixteenth of an inch material, you will then carry on and drill all of your track pieces on one side that three thirty seconds of an inch. Now do not push this. Let the drill bit do its job. This is a very slow process. So on one edge of the board, in either end, a half inch deep, 332nd diameter hole. Do that to every piece you've got. Well, after all that drilling, you should have something that looks like this. Now, don't change your setup. Do not change your fence. Do not change anything except for the drill bit. So right now, the center of our bit, the fence is set so that it will drill exactly in the center of our 3 16th inch stock. So we need to change our drill bit now 
to a 1 8 inch, inch diameter because we have to drill the holes for the other side. Now for these, they will not be stopped at half an inch. These are gonna go right down through to the halfway. Um, don't try to drill all the way through, guys. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna drill halfway down through our stock. I'll just set my stop here. We're gonna drill halfway through and then we're gonna flip it around and drill through and have the two holes meet. And as long as you're careful with your drilling, you should be able to accomplish that with no problem. So let me just set this up here and we'll run one through and I'll show you what you should end up with. One thing I will point out, the 1 8 bit does not leave a lot of material here on the thickness, so do not hold it like this. Do not put your thumb or your fingers anywhere near in case that uh, bit deflects or the drill bit deflects and comes out the side. So we should be able just to place this here. We'll start up our drill press and drill halfway through. and then flip it over and do the same thing. should end up with a 1 8 inch through hole just like that okay so we will drill all of our pieces like this and get our 1 8 inch diameter holes drilled and after quite some time this is what you're going to end up with now I have 80 of these here and I know that the plan only calls for 56 but my theory is I'd rather be looking at it than looking for it. And not all of these are gonna survive the whole process. Now out of the 80, I lost two in the drilling, which isn't that bad, but this really illustrates a few things. Number one, it illustrates to take your time. Take your time because uh, drill bit deflection is what causes this and the side blows out. The other thing that it illustrates is that keep your fingers away from where that drill bit is coming down through the stock. I pointed that out earlier and I've got no damage here at all because I followed my own rules. So even though I had two blowouts with the drill bit, no harm, no foul. So I lost two pieces of wood. I have plenty of extra. And what it also illustrates is that, as I said, not all of these will survive. So make extra. That is the important part. Guys, I'm telling you, this is a slow process. It's not difficult. As long as you take your time with your setup, it's very, very doable, but it's very time consuming. These all started off as rough cut stock at 10 a.m. this morning when I resawed and plane them down to their 3 16 rip them to their width, then cut them to their lengths, and then did the setup and did the drilling. It all started at 10 a.m. It's almost 5 p.m. now. It's 4.58. I have been in here for seven hours working on this. So don't think you're gonna do this quickly. And unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this week. It does go by quickly, doesn't it? Guys, this is a wonderful project. And although it looks like we didn't get that much done today, there was actually quite a bit. There's a lot of processes and a lot of time spent to do the steps that we did in today's show. If I had to give you one piece of advice that you could pull from today's show, if the only thing you got from today's show, um, I would have to say, that drilling. You need to take it slow. These tracks uh, are very finicky. It doesn't take much to throw them off. And one of the models that I built years ago, I did a track 
And when I assembled it, the track actually spiraled, it twisted. So I did some measurements and check this and check that. And I have to tell you, the amount that those holes were off was minuscule, but it was enough to mess the whole project up. Um, so just make sure that you're drilling right in the center of those boards. Take your time with that setup. Guys, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. While you're at it, you know what, you click that bell and then you won't miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. I really appreciate you all tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed today's content. I hope you're going to get a set of these plans and follow along with me. And more importantly, guys, I honestly hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.